What's up? For those of you who don't know, I'm Aidan, and this is um, you're watching the story of my barn conversion. So this is obviously a bit more of a vlog kind of style of things um, rather than a how-to. You're just following obviously what I do when I do it. So today we're gonna have a little chat about infrastructure, if that's useful to anyone out there, and so I'll do a little bit of other stuff in between. I just filmed a bit of a field just because um, it's gonna be topped tomorrow. So none of it's going to be here. Well, I don't know how low they cut it, but I assume a lot of it's going to go. So there are a lot of poppies coming up. I don't know obviously what's going to happen with them kind of things. So whether they'll be able to grow back or anything, but we'll, we'll see. So infrastructure. My first episode, if you remember, if you've watched that in it, is Lou was phoning up some borehole companies to get the water sorted out. Now obviously these are kind of things that you can be hard to cost when you're buying something and you're never really going to know unless you actually get some quotes. So if you are interested in buying something that's rural, potentially you could get in contact with a few companies before you do or make any offers or anything like that. But I can give you a general idea most expensive quote that we've had was 21,000 plus VAT. There was one that was slightly lower, just over 20,000. That firm we actually went with because they gave us a second option, which I'll explain in a second. And then there was another company that gave a quote just about 11,000 with no pumping equipment. That was just a drill basically so the other ones were obviously everything all in that's a quote obviously it's not necessarily accurate they'll have to see what they come across you don't know what filtration equipment that you'll need you can they can hazard a guess but it's just one of them things so this is my borehole i went with uh, a bloke that basically said he can give me an 80 meter borehole which is guaranteed water this one was at a 20 meter borehole that he suggested. That was on the basis that there was possibly a sand layer underneath here, because you can look on geology maps. He was the only one actually seemed to have done it. I had a look as well. So if you look on your uh, geolo geology of Britain, it's a website you can, I'll leave the link below. And that tells you in your area what on geology you've got and then that'll give you a chance and you'll understand what kind of grounds you've got it also has an option on there to select borehole scans so you can see what's how deep boreholes in the area are a lot of them around here are 80 meters but we're just on the edge of a, a sand part obviously hence the sand just here um, because this is my borehole so we kind of got away with it we, we paid for a, a dry drill just in case there was no water fountains now there should be water down here and we've got a rope and I've got a couple of cups so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it down and see if I can pull something out in general worst case scenario you're looking at 20 grand for a borehole there or thereabouts and then with all your pumping and everything like that if you was to budget out just say a minimum of 10 grand and uh, a, like high end it could be double that so yeah that's a big chunk of money like obviously an extra 10 grand that can pay for a kitchen or something so lucky enough we've got away with it 
So the borehole guys was meant to come today and put a, a cap over this. They cancelled because uh, there's three farmers in the um, general area that um, are, their pumps have stopped working because it, they dried out or something. They've not, we've not really had that much rain recently. The guys were meant to come and they, they take a sample and then they do um, a flow test and everything like that um, just to see how much water actually comes out. If it's a low yield, then that's one of the reasons why I might need a big like holding tank. Um, I'm assuming, I was just thinking off the top of my head, maybe um, 2,000 litres maybe. So that's the reason you, you need to, have, that needs to go somewhere, your your tank needs to go somewhere. It can go in the grounds. Um, I've done my shed a little bit bigger, so hopefully I'll be able to get everything in there. Um, and then a, a little bit of storage for like the lawnmower and stuff like that. If I can eat, well, maybe a riding one. I've done a big door, so it might fit through. Let's whack this off and then um, we'll see if um, I can get a sample. Can you see that little white dot just down there? That's the water. So I've taped a little plastic cup to a stone, a bit of rope. Let's have a look. There's nothing in it. It's, uh, it's wet. We've got a hole in the cup. So, um, it looks like there might not be any water. Like just maybe like an inch at the bottom. That's, that's crazy. So I'm just, obviously I marked the tape where it hit the water. So I'm just gonna do a quick measurement. So normally, roughly, if you're like a, an average sized person, you go from outstretched arm to here, your left nipple, that's about a metre, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's 12 to the first tape. That would almost make sense, wouldn't it? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. About 18 to that. So it was about 18. Yeah, so that, that's about right. So what, did the water fall out? When I was bringing it up? Try it again. Okay, I've done, I've done a retest. I think I've got it. Look, if I, there's right. There's a res, resistance about there. Yeah. Okay, I did put a bit of tape on, but let's just add another 400 mil on that. So now. There's a bloody snail in there. Panic averted. I thought we was gonna have to shell out another 10 grand then and go down 80 meters. Bottoms up. Ah, <laughs> sod that. So yeah, obviously it's a bit murky. And there is a snail in it. How much would someone have to give you to like drink this? Comment below. 
cut a grand, five grand, ten grand. I'll probably do it for ten. What do you reckon? Brilliant, brilliant. He's still alive, I'm gonna take him out. Did you understand what he said? Mr. Snow says Everyone should subscribe Give him a thumbs up <laughs> I don't know where to put him now Should we keep him forever? Hello little Mr. Snow I put the snow down uh, at the end of the field before he went though uh, he also said to push the um, notification bell, just in case. So yeah, let's have a chat about electricity. So electric, uh, I need to be careful I don't move my camera too much because the um, microphone lead's playing up and it's crackling. So yeah, transformer, this is obviously, it runs straight into here. I was extremely lucky when it comes to the electricity, uh, electrical connection. Uh, you need to contact your local DNO to get connected. That's a distribution network operator. They are non-profit, but it still costs lots of money. Mine comes to £2,000, and that was on the basis that uh, it was literally a straightforward connection. So I was going to connect off here initially. You'd know that if, if you'd watched the first episode, but it cost £4,000 just to shut down a network temporarily so off that that transformer goes to here so I dropped off that one and went straight through the ground over to here the um, the things that might trip you up you need to look at, if you are doing this kind of thing and you're interested you need to look at what the electricity supply is in the area what poles you've got about everything like that um, I know someone I spoke to online, they ended up paying eight and a half thousand because they needed extra poles across a field um, and they had to get the road shut down and road dug up and stuff like that. So it can cost a lot of money. So 2,000 is probably the best kind of price that you're gonna pay up to about 10,000 is kind of expected, I would imagine, but there are other things that can go wrong. So. You see that um, transform with that. That was upgraded when my other neighbours converted one of their barns into a, a business use. So the upgrade on the transformer because they had to shut down the network. The transformer is so expensive and all, all that kind of stuff. That comes at twenty four thousand. Now my neighbours would have had to have paid all of that. Had the DNO not decided that it was also upgrading their network at the same time so they paid half towards it so it was £12,000 each so obviously that that's a massive cost um, it would be even worse obviously if they decided they wasn't going to upgrade the network now had my neighbour had to pay the full 24000 what happens is if um, there's a thing that they've, they've got, it's called like second in line. So basically, he, uh, my neighbours were first in line to upgrade it. And then had I had come afterwards and they would have paid the full upgrade, I would have then had to have paid 50% towards it. So it would have cost me an extra £12,000, so £14,000 connection. So it could have gone wrong. Now, the third in line doesn't pay anything. So what's happened is first and second in line would have been my neighbours and the DNO and I'm effectively third in line. That's the reason why I didn't have to pay anything towards it. So I've been very, very lucky. There's obviously things like this that you wouldn't necessarily consider when you're doing, um, getting involved in a barn conversion or doing a rural property or anything like that. It's, it's just one of them things you just need to go right okay this is potentially going to happen obviously barn conversions and everything like that it's going to cost a hell of a lot of money anyway but I'm, I'm 
I don't want to spend more money than I need to and so I'm the kind of person that will try and work out ways of saving money. If I spend money some, somewhere then it needs to be saved elsewhere. So uh, the, um, the infrastructure though, you can't really save too much money so you, you just have to lump it. So you need to budget for them things in the first place. I mean, for me, the stuff that we've had to pay out for already, and so I've done a cost in, and um, we was looking forward to having a handmade kitchen, um, but I know that's going to be quite expensive, and so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own kitchen. A lot of people have said I'll just go to Howden's, but I want something special, and I'm confident that I can probably do it. There's YouTube videos for that kind of stuff, eh? I just need to get some tools and um, I'll crack it out. I've just spent a little bit of time just lining up the cladding, and getting ready to whack it out tomorrow. We'll do a bit at least when the, the old boy's um, top in the field. Uh, because I'm doing it by myself, I've made these little, what would you say, jigs. Um, that one down there has got a little edge on it to stop the plank falling off. So this will keep my overlaps constant. So I'm gonna put some planks on now and try it. Um, I'm gonna use my nail gun. I don't know whether it's gonna split the wood, but we'll give it a go. And what I'm gonna try and do is um, nail through two at the same time. So this one's not fixed yet. I'm gonna put the one on top and then I'm gonna put the nails through and see, see how it goes. So that worked fine. That's my little jig. So between here and here, that's 140. Um, and then the new board sits on top of here and it's kept on by this. So I'll be able to do the longer lengths as well by myself. And it should be easier. And then this one, it doesn't need the bit because that's where I'm gonna nail it first. So I'll do one more and then uh, I'll call it a day. So that worked fine, so hopefully uh, this episode will be a quick, easy edit. Usually, for the first four that I've done, um, I haven't done the fifth one yet, I'm behind. So they've taken me about 10 hours to edit something that's only like just over 10 minutes long, so it's an absolute nightmare. Hopefully I'll get quicker. Um, but this one I've just been chatting loads so it will be like yeah but hopefully it won't be too boring so I'm going to leave it there and then um, tomorrow will be a new episode I should do some editing tonight as well see you later